thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I join with the Prime Minister in her comments about Sir David? Uh, she spoke for the whole House when she made those comments, and I know uh, how deeply his loss was felt on the opposite benches, and we extend our best wishes across at this important time. Mr Speaker, I also want to send my heartfelt condolences to the families of all those who tragically lost their lives in Chrysler last week. Donegal is a special place to me and my family and across this House. Uh, The people there are in all of our thoughts. Mr Speaker, this morning the Business Secretary toured the TV studios arguing that the turmoil in the markets has nothing to do with her budget. Does the Prime Minister agree with him? Well, Mr Speaker, what we have done is we have taken decisive action. We have taken decisive action to make sure that people are not facing energy bills of £6,000 for two years. And I think we remember the opposition is only talking about six months. We have also taken decisive action to make sure that we are not facing the highest taxes for 70 years in the face of a global economic slowdown. And what we are making sure is that we protect our economy at this very difficult time internationally. And as a result, as a result of our action, Mr Speaker, and this has been independently corroborated, we will see higher growth and lower inflation. Mr Speaker, avoiding the question, ducking responsibility, lost in denial. No wonder investors have no confidence in her government. And this is why it matters. A few weeks ago, Zach and Rebecca from Wolverhampton were all set to buy their first home. Then the government's borrowing spree sent interest rates spiralling and their mortgage offer was withdrawn. I met them last week. They're back to square one, unable to buy, devastated, sick to the back teeth with excuses and blame shifting. Does the Prime Minister understand why Zach and Rebecca are completely furious with her. Mr Speaker, the fact is that when I came into office, people were facing energy bills of up to £6,000 a year. Well, I'm sorry. Mr Speaker, the party opposite are shouting, but he is opposing the very package that we brought in the energy price guarantee. That was the major part of the mini budget that we announced. And Mr Speaker, he has refused to confirm whether or not he backs our energy price guarantee for two years, which protects families not just this winter, but next winter. What we're seeing, Mr Speaker, is we are seeing interest rates rising globally. We are doing, they are rising globally in the face of Putin's appalling war in Ukraine. And what we are doing is helping people with lower stamp duty, helping people with their energy costs, reducing inflation with our energy package and keeping taxes low. And I notice that the honourable gentleman had a Damascan conversion last night when he backed our cut to national insurance. Mr Speaker, the economy is in turmoil. People are really worried. This is really not the time to descend into absolutely nonsense attacks about last night. There's no point. There's no point. There's no point trying to hide it. Everyone can see what has happened. The Tories went on a borrowing spree, sending mortgage rates through the roof. They are skyrocketing by £500 a month. And for nearly two million homeowners, their fixed rate deals are coming to an end next year. They're worried sick, and everybody in this House knows it. They won't forgive. They won't forget, and nor should they. When will she stop ducking responsibility, do the right thing, and reverse her kamikaze budget, which is causing so much pain? Mr Speaker, Last night, the Labour Party supported bringing down national insurance. And is he really? Is he really? 
I won't say the Prime Minister. I'm sorry if the wrong party doesn't, but I certainly do. <laughs> I'm just, Mr. Speaker, I'm genuinely unclear yeah. about what yeah. Labour. I think we don't want an early bath at this stage. The Rugby World Cup's coming. Don't start it too soon. Just let's hear the questions and certainly the answers, Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I'm genuinely unclear as to what, as to what the Labour Party's policy is on our energy price guarantee. It was the biggest part. It was the biggest part of our mini budget. Are the opposition saying they want to reverse it and they want to see people facing energy bills of £6,000? Is that what he's saying? Here's Starmer. Mr Speaker, the, the Prime Minister knows very well that on this side we voted against the national insurance in the first place. She, she, she voted for it. So who is doing the U-turn? Honestly. Last week, the Prime Minister was forced to U-turn on her unfunded tax cut for the super wealthy. Yeah. This week, she's beginning to realise that she needs to extend the windfall tax, yeah. one step behind the CEO of Shell. Yeah. But she's, she's still going ahead with £18 billion of tax cuts for the richest businesses, yeah. and they didn't even ask for it. Yeah. She's still gift-wrapped a stamp duty cut for landlords just as renters feel the pinch. Mm. And she's still holding out tax cuts for those who live off stocks and shares. Yeah. Why does she expect working people to pick up the bill yeah. for her unfunded tax cuts for those at the top? Yeah. I notice that the Leader of the Opposition is still not saying whether or not he supports our energy price guarantee. This is, this is very relevant, Mr Speaker, because it is the biggest part it is the biggest part of our mini budget. It's the biggest part of the mini budget. The fact is that all the opposition have said is that people should be supported for six months. Does he think that in March pensioners should be facing very high energy bills? Because that's what will happen if he doesn't support our energy price guarantee. Yes, Mr Speaker, not even attempting to answer the questions now. I gently remind her that the idea of freezing energy bills was a Labour idea which she then took on. During her leadership contest, the Prime Minister said, and I quote her exactly, I'm very clear, I'm not planning public spending reductions. Is she going to stick to that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mr Speaker, we are spending we are spending almost a trillion pounds of public spending. We were spending 700 billion back in 2010. What we will make sure is that over the medium term the debt is falling. But we will do that not by cutting public spending, but by making sure we spend public money well. And the honourable gentleman talks about our spending, which he doesn't seem to support on the energy price guarantee. But the reality is he can't criticise us on one hand for spending money, on the other hand claiming we're cutting public expenditure. Yes, they can cheer. I hope they listen very, very carefully to that last answer because other people will listen very, very carefully to it. Who voted, uh, who voted for this? Who voted for this? Who voted for this? Not homeowners paying an extra 500 extra on their mortgages. Who voted this? Not working people paying for tax cuts to the largest companies. Who voted for this? Not even most of the MPs behind her. Who know, who know you can't pay for tax cuts on the never never? Does she think, does she think the public will ever forgive the Conservative Party if they keep on defending this madness and go ahead with a kamikaze budget? Mr Speaker, what our budget has delivered is security, fa security family for families. 
over the next two winters. It's made sure that we're going to see higher economic growth, lower inflation and more opportunities. The way that we will get our country growing is through more jobs, more growth, more opportunities, not through higher taxes, higher spending and his friends in the union stopping hard-working people get to work.